From New York, New York, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas, you rat bastard! <laughs> and now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. It's my favorite time of year. My favorite time of year, Fortune Magazine has revealed its annual list of the 50 most powerful women. Powerful. And it has their names and it has their photographs listed. And that's fantastic because it gives me an opportunity to prove what I've been saying for years. And that is the reason women study hard, get lots of degrees, and work their way up to CEO is because they are not attractive enough to get a man to pay their bills. And these photos, which you can find on the Fortune magazine website, fortune.com, I mean, just an amazing list of women you would not want to do. Seriously. Uh, it's, it's remarkable. Uh, some of them are just average at best, but some of them are so remarkably hideous that the idea of these women taking their clothes off is, is beyond beyond even thinking about. Oof. Now, I'm looking at some of these photos right now. Number one on the list is the uh, chairman and CEO of Pepsi. Her name is Indra Nooyi, and uh, she is from India, but she has been at Pepsi for a very long time. And, uh, you know, great work on the beverage sales. She's expanded international business, says here. That's 26% of revenues. Pushing healthier products like orange juice with omega-3. It's all good. Done a good job at the stock price. Now, I would say she is not hideous. She's average looking. Average looking is about as hot as these chicks get. But then when you move down the list to, let's say, number two, Irene Rosenfeld, who is the chairman and CEO of Kraft Foods, just an opinion. This is a woman with an Adam's apple. And you know what I think of women who have Adam's apples? I think at one time maybe they had something else going on. I mean, if you take a look at number two, Irene Rosenfeld, again, I haven't lifted her skirt, so I haven't seen what the plumbing looks like, but uh, why do I get the feeling that she's had the plumbing worked on? Just an opinion. No, oh, yes. Pat Wirtz, Chairman, President, CEO of Archer Daniels Midland Corporation. Uh, you know, what's amazing about these women, they all have very short hair. They all have that kind of um, short, sensible hair. Uh, Pat Words is average, not hideously homely, I would say. I don't like their TV commercials, ADM. Anne Mulcahy of Xerox. Hopefully she won't be Xeroxing herself anytime soon. This woman is, oh boy, she's ugly. Yikes. Angela Braley, the president and CEO of WellPoint, at best average. But then we get to the one, this woman is scary. Okay, number six on the list, Andrea Jung, who is the 
Uh, I believe she's the, uh, yes, the chairman and CEO of Avon Products. That's Avon Calling, and she really likes her products. And you can tell because she wears about a pound of lipstick. Uh, this, this, this woman is, well, first of all, I want to suggest uh, heading down the old eyebrow shop and getting those things tweezed. Holy cow. She's got Adam Carolla eye, eyebrows. It's unbelievable. And then she's got this, the lipstick is just beyond belief. I mean, do you really need that much? Okay, we believe you. Quality products, fine. But uh, as I always say about this woman, every year when her thing um, uh, uh, comes up, when she is the one of the 50 most powerful women at Fortune Magazine's uh, 50 most powerful women, all I could say is that... <laughs> <laughs> that that for any of you guys who think all Asian women are hot and you're, you're completely not discriminating, if they're Asian, you're in. You don't care. This woman will completely break your fantasy. I don't know what part of Asia her family is from, but I want to tell you, if you think Asian broads are hot, can we tear off the phones in here? How about we just turn them completely off? That would be good. Telephones are going off. But, uh, yes, homely, homely, homely. You go down this list, and the best you get is average, but some of these women are just atrocious. It's a bad list when Oprah Winfrey, who's number eight on the list, chairman of Harpo Productions, when she is, like, the, the hottest thing on the list. That's a bad list. That is a very bad list. I'm going to get Brenda Barnes, the chairman and CEO of Sarah Lee. And then uh, Ursula Burns, the president of Xerox. At Xerox, they do celebrate diversity. And uh, again, another homely broad. Ursula Burns. Yikes. So um, what I'm saying about this, as I say every year when this list comes out, I have always said that hot chicks don't need to be CEOs. They don't need to be... Um, financially successful. They don't need to be the presidents of companies. They don't need to get degrees in college. Hot chicks don't have to do anything. Hot chicks will find guys to pay for everything. It is homely chicks like the chicks on this list of the 50 most powerful women in business. These are the chicks who had to study late. These are the chicks who had lots of Fridays and Saturdays to bone up because they were never boning down. You know what I'm talking about? Absolutely horrific. Horrific. Yikes. So I don't know if you've seen this list. It's on the Fortune Magazine website, fortune.com. But it just proves what I've been saying for a very long time, okay? Hot chicks are not powerful because being hot is powerful. They don't need to be powerful, successful, financially well-off. They don't need to have titles. Hot chicks get whatever they need taken care of for them. This is a list of women for whom guys were never, ever going to pay the bills. Don't you agree? Five eight hundred town Like it. Like it. 1-800-5-800-866. Tom. 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 And oh, man. Great son of Sam. Look at here. Look at here. Tom, let me tell you. You are the truth, the way, and the light. You hear me? The Tom Likes Show. the Tom Likens show. Everything falling apart here. The wind speed and falling off my microphone. What are you going to do? 1-800-5800-TOM. Fortune Magazine once again revealing the list of the 50 most powerful women. And once again, not a bangable woman on the list. Susie on the Tom Likens show. Hello, Susie. Hi, Tom. Yes. Long time listener, first time caller. Long time listener, first time caller. I 
I was calling because I do agree with what you're saying somewhat, but on the other hand, I disagree. I'm waiting. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, I disagree in the sense that I think that a lot of beautiful women who are smart, intelligent, well-educated, they can become CEOs. They can succeed, but I think that a lot of men or even women, like you said, that aren't good-looking might not take them seriously. How many good-looking or... women, how many good-looking women who are qualified to be CEOs are not getting jobs? You know, I, I don't know about that. This is just my opinion, like I said, but I just think that if a good-looking woman who's smart and educated wants to move up in the world, might not be taking that seriously. People just look at them for their appearance and not for their mind or their intelligent or their education. I, I totally disagree. I think it's the other way around. I think good-looking women do not have to exercise that part of their body. Might not necessarily have to, but if they want to, if I don't, don't think But they, if they don't have to, they generally don't. You know what? We only do as much as we have to do in life. For example, you'll notice that women go to the gym after they break up with their boyfriend or their husband. Not while they're with him. Also while they're with him, they think it's not necessary. <laughs> Yeah, so that they can get the next boyfriend. I totally agree. But, but I'm just saying women that do, women do not go to the gym for their husband. They, they've already got the husband. They got him. Right. And I think I, it's the same thing here. I think, you know, good-looking women, there could be some who are intelligent enough to be successful. But why would they want to? They don't need to. A man will pay for everything. There are some women out there who are beautiful who want to make their own way in life, who don't necessarily want a man to take care of them forever. They wow. want to have their own career, their own thing going for them. And because they're beautiful, I think, or they might be held back a little bit because people don't take them seriously. But you, don't even, you can't even name one woman who's in that position. I mean, I can't name anybody off the top of my head, but I'm just saying... It's a theory you have, but you don't have any actual... Names of people you don't see. You've never actually seen somebody like that. Um, not off the top of my head. I can't really think of anybody. Not but... even the bottom of your head. <laughs> I think I think I'm a good-looking girl, and if I wanted to work my way up in a company, if I wanted to be a CEO, I would think I'd have a hard time because people wouldn't take me seriously. That's that's why you don't want to be a CEO. No, I'm not saying that's not that's not why. I'm just saying if I wanted to, if that's what my goal was, I would think well, I'd why have why don't a you want to? I'm sorry? Why, why don't you want to be a CEO? Um, I really don't want to be married to my job. Yeah, you I want don't... to be married to a guy who's going to pay your bills. I have a guy, and we make about the same amount of money, and I'm not with him for his money. I'm with him for him. Right. Until you marry him and decide to pressure him to have children, and then you tell him you can't go to work as much as you used to, then he will make more than you. Eventually, actually, I'll probably be, be making more than him. Maybe. Who knows? Only for a short period of time. Till when? Until you decide you want to have a baby. Yeah, that's the thing is I don't know. I don't. I'm not really dead set on having children. I I don't really or know if against I want to have it. kids. But you're not dead set against it either. Um, I'm really, really not into having children. To be honest with you. Then say you'll never do it. I can't say never say never, but well, I'm I can say I'm, I'm never. Go I I can say I'm never going to do it. <laughs> yeah, well, you're a lot older than I am. I'm only 29, and I can say right now it's it's it's. Uh, I said it when I was 29. Really? Yes. What stopped you from having children? I I I don't want any responsibility. And I hear you on that. I'm I'm pretty pretty selfish right now. I don't want to take care of anybody but me. Having children is just as selfish as not having children. How so? Because people don't have children for altruistic reasons. They have children because they think, you know what, we're so good looking. Can you imagine how good looking our kid would be? I know. I agree. We're so smart. For... Do you know how smart our kid would be? for all the wrong reasons because they think it's what they're supposed to do because it's their ego and like you said they want to see what their kids are going to look like and if they're going to be smart and beautiful and i i don't i don't think that way i don't believe in that yeah well I, and again uh you know everybody does it for their own reasons that they think are good 
the bottom line is that none of them are more or less selfish than the others. Yeah. And and that's what I'm saying. I don't that's why I don't believe in having children thus far in my life. I don't I'm too selfish. I want to do things for me. I want to live my life and I don't believe bringing a child into the world for my own selfish reasons is the right way to go. Well, but that we'll doesn't see. mean that I can't be a CEO of a company. I just also choose the other route where I don't want to be married to my job either. Well, I think most women are not that interested in working, especially attractive women who know they can attract guys who will pay their bills or help pay their bills. I'm a pretty attractive woman, and I work two jobs. I work my butt off six days a week, two jobs, mm. and I could be with a guy well, maybe right maybe you're now. the exception of the rule. So what? That doesn't mean the rule isn't the rule. Right. I guess, like you say, there's always an exception. And they, they, but the fact is, the exception proves the rule. Exactly. And like I said, I, I, I called to say I agree with you, and I also disagree with you a little bit. But I see. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. Susie, I appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Juan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Uh, first time caller, first time listener. At least for the last two months I've been a listener. And uh, as soon as you said that Oprah Winfrey was the hottest thing on that list, I think I threw up a little in my mouth. Well, I'm, I'm not saying she's hot. I'm saying she's the hottest of these 50. <laughs> well, whenever you said that, I honestly, I threw up a little in my mouth. I mean, I just, I, yeah, no, not not happening in my world, man. And I completely, I agree with you. Women don't become CEOs because, I mean, the good-looking ones don't become CEOs because... They don't want to. They want everybody. They want to be taken care of. That's why they, they don't. Want to. Yeah, they don't need to. Yeah. I mean, I completely agree with you, man. And uh, yeah, I love the show, man. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate the call. It's awfully quiet over there. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Rebecca on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm doing okay. I am a long-time listener, first-time caller, many, many years, and I just wanted to say I work in corporate America. I am a district manager for Pinkberry, and I have to agree with what you say, but I also wanted to comment that you said uh, beautiful women don't have to work. No, they, they do. don't. They don't have to. Well... Because so many guys listen to your rules that, um, yeah, women are lucky if they get laid nowadays out there. Why do you say that? Because a lot of men listen to your rules and they just don't play the same game they used to. What do you mean? I mean that... Um, I mean, I'm waiting I, for you to tell me. The same game they used to. What game? The same game of, oh, I'm beautiful, you have to wait on me hand and foot, I'm, you know, you're going to buy me everything I need, you're going to pay my bills. That just doesn't fly out there in the dating world anymore. Men are more likely to say, pay your own way, get a job, and uh, handle it, and call me when you're ready. Oh, so you're a 9 or a 10? I would say, um, I've been told I'm a 10 many times, but I'd say I'm a good 8. <laughs> You're a good eight. Heck yeah. And you can't get guys to pay for anything. Oh, it's not that I'm married. So, I mean, I have a man that pays plenty, but I also earn my own way, and I always have. And uh, was a single mom for 17 years and raised my kids and then uh, recently got married. My husband's 32. I'm 52. Um, yeah, it works. Your husband is 32? Yep. Holy cow. And he's hot. Does he know that when you're 60, he'll be 40? Yes, he does. And he's okay with that? Heck yeah, he's okay with that. I don't know. It's, uh, You'd have to it, see his wife. Well, says you. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would love to get a look. Why don't you send me a photo? I will. I'll send it to your email. Please do. You got it, Tom. All right, Tommy. But I have to say, I, I agree with you 100%, um, and you rock. I listen to you every single day. Well, thank you for that, dear. I appreciate that. 
And just keep telling the guys, Tom. All right, Rebecca. Thank you for that. Penelope on the Tom Like You Show. Hello. Um, I had a slight disagreement as well, only because my mother is a nurse midwife, and my parents are in Alaska, so it's not a California thing. But my mother was a bros' princess down here in 69. Uh, the only reason my father makes more money, uh, money than she does is because he's retired um, colonel for the Air Force. And so with that, and he has a, a regular job as well. So he's, that's the only reason that he makes more money than she does. I also have a sister who is 24 who's doing her third year of her PhD at Drexel, and once she is graduated, she will make more money than her husband. And anyway, right, The fact that she makes that... more money the day she graduates doesn't mean anything, because one day she will want to have a baby, and when she does, she will not be showing up at the office so often anymore. I disagree because my mother raised us differently. It's very, very important to be an independent woman with your own finances and your own two feet to stand on to say, hey... I'm just and good. even it's if that better. is true, even if that is true, these are exceptions to the rule. We're talking about 175 million American women. These are exceptions. But it's also a generation that is changing. There are lots of us that are growing that are early 20s that are making a difference. And generally, I have to say, in California, making what a I found, difference. What do you mean? What do you mean making a difference? What does that mean? It means that there's more generations of our age growing up to finish degrees, to have higher level jobs with higher level degrees, to make more money because it sets us apart as women, as well as being women with family. Well, I I don't happen to think there's any such trend. I think, uh, yeah, there's more women in college. And okay. yes, there are women going to college who get degrees. Uh, but I also believe, as, and I've seen statistics that back this up, and we've read them on the air, by the way. That just because a woman goes to college doesn't mean she's going to work in a career or stay working in a career. Fair enough, and I can understand that because I have cousins and aunts who got a degree to get married to have I mean, kids. the term, so the term trophy wife came from somewhere. <laughs> That's okay. I'm not going to argue that one at all. It also came from this area, too. And so I've got family all over the U.S. because my dad was Air Force. But I don't think that it's such, I don't think it's so much the case anymore. I don't. I would like to think that it doesn't. And I mean, I'm 22. I'm very close to being done with my biochem degree, and I'm not stopping. I'm going to move on to try and get into a program the way my sister did, and do a master's and a PhD in one program. But it doesn't well, mean I'm going to. This stop. is all wonderful, but it's turning into a commercial for you. And the bottom line here is that the average woman is not like that. It's just the way it is. Harold on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? I'm doing great. Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you. I was looking at this list you said to go online and uh, looking at this Fortune uh, web page. There is one chick that's kind of doable, the 50th, uh, Marissa Mayer. She's only 33, uh, vice president in search products for uh, Google. But on the yes. same web page, it has 25 highest paid women. And when you click to that, the one that sticks out is that... Uh, it's Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Cruz. She's definitely a ten, making like uh, thirty-four point one million. No, she's not a ten. I'm looking at her right now. Her oh, name yeah. is Safra Katz. Not because what she looks like. Oh her, no, her <laughs> money is great. The money's great. It's the only way you can look at some of these broads on here. That's, that's exactly right. I mean, look at that number two, uh, number three, Diane Green. <laughs> oh my goodness. And by I the way, she was only Sharon, like in her forties. So well, that's a rough forty-something years. Yes, and then you have the one from Altel, number one on the highest-paid women list, with thirty-eight point six million. She did not even submit a photo. They just put the company logo <laughs> where her photo would go. And I think that tells you everything you need to know. By the way, her name, and I think it's a great name, Sherilyn Gassaway. <laughs> Gas away, you'll find it on your pharmacist shelf right next to Bino. <laughs> Very exciting. But, uh, yeah, some of these women are uh, scary looking. I mean, I, I want to tell you something. Hey, when you go to that Power 50, and there's that one woman who looks like she used to be a man. You know the one I'm talking about? Wait a minute. She's like in the top five, isn't she? Well, that, that's that's one of them, yes. <laughs> she, that's the one with the Adam's apple. <laughs> Oh, number two. Number two, Irene Rosenfeld. Take yeah, a look. Got a little Adam's apple action going there. Now, I can't, you know what, again, this is an opinion protected by the United States Constitution. 
that looks like it used to be a man. I think you're right. She kind of looks like Renee Richards. Yes, I want to see her hands. <laughs> Around a big block of Kraft cheese. <laughs> yeah, I've been here in North Carolina for the last year and a half, and it's a culture shock. I came from South Florida, and man, I understand. it's horrible. It's a different world, Harold. Let's go to Priscilla at half past the hour on the Tom Likas show. The 50 most powerful women in Fortune magazine have the, appeared once again, as they do every year. Hello. So what what are you doing now today, Tom? You're making fun of people that have money and they're unattractive? I, I find that so funny to come from you. Well, if you don't know what I'm doing today, why, why are you asking? No, I, I figure that's what you're doing once again. So you do know what I'm doing. So you do right. know what I'm doing. You're making fun of the women. So why did you have to? Why did you have to call and ask me what I'm doing if you already knew what I was doing? I can't figure out why you do these things. I, I really, I'm perplexed by you. I, I gotta tell you, and you make me laugh. Like, like you're attractive. Come on. I mean, you may have good dialogue. I, I'll buy that. But what do you think that these young, attractive women are dating you for? I don't care what they're dating me for because the fact that I have money and I'm Tom Likas, that's the essence of who I am. You, when you wanted to use the brain that God gave you, if you gave it any thought, what do you think? It you doesn't think matter. Laughing at you it and doesn't you're matter. It I doesn't mean, matter. Because everybody, everybody is with somebody for a reason, darling. Really? And just because, yes, and just because you are over the hill past your expiration date and bitter, it, uh, I'm still happy to talk to you about it. You're going to be one of these women that send in a photo, okay, because you will just eat your words. Uh, darling, uh, again, if you knew the the youth of the women, the attractiveness level of the women I have been with, uh, you are the one who would be eating your words. No, I, first of all, I know someone that dated you, okay, first of all. That's why you I don't make... know. You don't know anything about anything, darling. Yes, I do. Okay, sure. I know someone that dated you, and sure you, you, do. you are so nice. You were not even. You were oh, not the person. Here's the big scandal. Here's the big scandal. I'm nice. Wow, you sure outed me. <laughs> That's the beauty part about me. What's the biggest scandal that could come out? Somebody calls up and says, I know somebody who dated you, and you're actually nice. Ooh, call the National Enquirer immediately. Get my friend Mike Walker on the phone and tell him that. My friend dated Tom Likas, and he was nice. This just in to TMZ. Tom Likas, actually a nice person. This just in. Sources who dated Tom Likas report that he was actually nice. More on this story as it becomes available. <laughs> I know somebody who dated you and she said you were nice. She thought she was like embarrassing me by revealing this. She said you were nice. Thank you, dear. Pays to advertise. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Andrew on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. That chick right there, she wanted to bang you, I could tell. I could she's tell. Just you know what? She's upset that she hasn't banged me. She's upset that she's past her expiration date that and that great. I would have nothing to do with her. That's what she's upset about. But we she's, all upset that, she's upset that her friend got to date me, and moreover, that her friend found me to be nice. There's probably some other Tom Likas. I know another Tom Likas. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the only point that I wanted to make to you was that you're 100, you're awesome, and by you saying that there's 50 chicks, that none of them were bangable, by your rule, you always say, don't turn them down, turn them around. So in that perspective, I would love to bang a rich white chick or any chick of, of color. I'll tell color. you what. i tell you what. I will, if you can bang number two on the list, Irene Rosenfeld, and you can get photographic evidence, I'll pay you $10,000. Okay, make it fifteen, and you've got a deal. Done. All right. We'll try for it. My girlfriend but won't be happy. I, I don't have a girlfriend. I'm just kidding. I need, well, have a threesome if necessary. I need photographic evidence. Uh, I have a webcam. We can see we set it up. In my room. You might want to give her a good shave first, though. <laughs> uh, she got an Adam's apple, right? 
Uh, you got to see it. I will have to look at it. I will do that whenever I get to my house. I'm sitting outside 7-Eleven about to drink some beer. And listen, well, when I get to my house, I'll drink some beer. Don't drink and drive, people. Exactly. <laughs> and by the way, uh, CBS Radio reminds you to drink responsibly. And I am and, a, all for that. And I'm often. Wondering. And often. I listen to your wine show. Your, your wine show is pretty good, too. I've actually tried some of the wines you suggested on your wine show, too. Did you like them? Oh, uh, they're pretty good. I don't really I drink Bud Light all the time. I don't really like wine, but I tried it because you said it was like $13. Very good. I'm glad to see I'm getting that upscale clientele here. There you go. 22-year-old drinking wine. Or 23. I don't even know how old I am. Look at that. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for the call. I appreciate it. Tom like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Every time I go out with the girl, they just talk, 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 just shut up. And I listen to your show, and girls that call in, they still talk. So I'm sitting at a coffee shop last week, and I think of something. Girls talk to each other and say, no guy is worth your tears, right? And here's what I come up with. No girl is worth your ears, man. If they talk, just dump them. The Tom Likey Show. Yep, from New York City. It's the Tom Likey Show. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's the telephone number here. Fortune Magazine really revealed their annual list of the 50 most powerful women in business. And it's not pretty. Literally. Sarah on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how you doing? Great. Good. My question is, how many of these women are married or have children? I, I really don't know. Them? I think they're probably married to nice guys who don't make a lot of money. Who we'll probably do the majority of the child care. That would be my guess. You know, I think it is a factor. I think that, you know, attractive women, you know, get in those situations. You know, I'm, I'm educated. I make six figures. I make way more than my boyfriend does. And, um, you know, that's something that I think we have to come to down the line. I think if we have that decision to have children, then, you know, one of our careers has to take the sideline. I think most cases it's the woman's. I think but the attractive no, women make that decision to have a family. Well, the attractive women can make a decision to have a family. They don't have to have careers. Correct. And I think the you know, unattractive women don't always have as many options. I think right. you're right. I think that, you know, they they will have to work harder, so they work towards they, a career. They have to study, that's right. They they have to steal you know, all these degrees they have in economics, all these master's degrees and everything. It's because when they were in college, they were so homely, they had plenty of Friday and Saturday evenings free uh, to study hard. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I just think that, you know, I don't think so that while the hot girls were, do it. While the hot girls were boning their way through Europe, uh, the homely girls were uh, boning up. Yeah, I, no, I agree with you. I know you said that before, but I don't think that... You know, it means that attractive women aren't capable of it or that, you know, you make us sound less degrading because we are attractive, that we, you know, live off our husbands. I don't think that's always the case. Most of you do do that, and even if there are exceptions to the rules, so what? And I think times will change. I think that years down the line you'll see a difference. I think that not as many people are getting married or having kids and... I think education is at a different level, and I think, you know, 20 years down the line, it's going to change. You'll see a lot more attractive women on that I list. can't wait for the day when women uh, stop nagging men to get married. <laughs> I don't think it's always one way. <laughs> Mostly it is. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, darling, thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. We have another Sarah. On the Tom Like Your Show, hello. Hi, Papa Tom. How are you? Doing okay, dear. Good. Um, so I'm here to kind of call you out on something. I've been listening to you for about well, two or three years, and I've been tempted to call in before but haven't. And I'm on my drive home here, and I heard you just the last portion of the conversation that you had with the um, gal before break, please. And she said that uh, one of her friends had dated you. 
And she really gets the words out of her mouth that you were nice and you hang up on her or disconnect her. And I find that when things get heated and aren't kind of going your way, you hang up on people. Darling, the topic was not about what I'm like to date, okay? The topic is about the 50 most powerful women in American business. That's the topic. Right. The topic is not what I'm like on a date. Absolutely. But in And all so fairness, when she starts also... going off in that direction, I, I am going to keep the topic on track. Okay, and fair enough. On Maybe top of that, to would have been on top of that, on top of that, this is a woman who thought she was being clever and thought she was going to embarrass me by saying, oh, I know someone who dated you, and you're thinking she's going to say, yeah, you're a real creep, and she doesn't. She says, oh, but you're really nice, like it's, a, like it's an insult. But I don't think you let her finish. I think if There was nothing just... left to say. I really am not. Okay, she, her friend dated me, and I was really nice. What more do you need to know? Okay, fair enough. But then here's what I'm going to call you out on secondly, though. Is again, Ew. when things get heated, you'll You're either calling me out. Them, or wait a second, or you'll interrupt them. This is heated so, right now. I haven't hung up on you yet. But you're doing exactly what I'm going to, my second point uh, that I'm going to call you out on. One second. What is that? Yeah, you absolutely interrupt people. I will always interrupt people. Well, that is the show. The microphone, right? That but is the show. Are you ready that, is, but that is the way, that is the way talk radio is done, sweetheart. You don't understand that, but that's how it's done. Nobody wants to listen to an anonymous caller droning on for 20 minutes until they finally put you. a period that's at the, the end of a sentence. My job is to keep the conversation moving, and my job is to put some spice in it by having some heat or some dramatic tension. And, right, and if, you, happens, if, you want, happens, if you want, if you want, if you want a radio program where people just blather on incessantly, you should tune down to NPR or your local uh, college radio station where people can sit and do 14-minute pieces on bluegrass music and 11-minute pieces on ostriches and how they're being made into hamburgers. You, you can go down and listen to that. But this Tom, is talk radio, right and this is how... Right? That's exactly right. So I totally if you agree knew how to do, if you though, knew how to a, do this, listener, you, but if you knew how to do this, you'd be down here making a seven-figure salary instead of calling in. Are you gonna let me finish? Maybe not. <laughs> Here's my the next point, though. When things get heated, you interrupt, you hang up on them, and as a listener to you for three years, and I've talked about this with even mm. my husband and other people who listen to you. Sometimes yeah, they all I'm agree, waiting to hear what they're gonna say, like that woman who called in. You're not gonna. You're never gonna. Gonna hear everything. You're never going to hear everything everybody is going to say. Because every but caller who calls here, every caller who calls them. here wants to be on for the entire four hours. I agree. Every I'm caller who that. calls I'm, here wants to be heard. on all day. If you're truly being fair, you'll let everyone kind of I be am hurt. not I being fair. There is no fairness here. There, we, we, I am not being fair. My job is not to be fair. My job is to do the most entertaining radio program I know how to do. And in Fairness my little opinion, I has think nothing to do with it. I think it would have been really interesting to hear her point. Or other I don't points, care though, how interesting you think it would have been, interrupt. could have been, or should have been. Voice, You've been listening for three years. The proof is in the pudding. You've been listening for three years. So what, you can call up and say you don't like the way I do it, but you've been listening for three years. I don't like, but here's where it comes in again. I don't like care you whether you say, like I'm it not or not. All I care here. about is whether you listen and I make my inordinately large salary. That's all I care about. I don't care if you think I'm fair. There's nothing I, fair about it. This is not a democracy. It's a radio program. Yeah, I totally get it. But not all the time is it bad. Otherwise, I wouldn't listen. But sometimes you do get me to the point where, like, she's not even making her letting, letting her make Again, the as long as you've been listening for three years, it doesn't really matter. But you could have me listening more instead of turning if you wouldn't cut people off. You when don't they have turn. Really you get upset. You get that. angry. But you keep listening because you wouldn't know so much about how I do the show if you weren't listening. It's not like I don't listen all the time, but I don't listen maybe as much as I would if you just like oh. let that caller on. Want to? But if I if I did that, you know how many people would tune out? Let me tell you, uh, I know I this, doubt it. You'd have sweetheart. To I know this business better than you do. I've been doing it a lot longer than you have. You and trust do. me when I tell just you, letting you people opinion. letting people drone on incessantly makes more people tune out than stay tuned in. 
I did, and I totally agree with you, but you missed my point entirely. I mean, now, now would you like me to have somebody call in who's dated me and go into graphic detail about everything, what it's like to date me? I'm a nice guy. I'm a mean guy. I'm a nasty guy. I never called them back. I did call them back. I called them back, but then I never showed up. I, maybe you, you want to hear that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> now, now you see, now your phone is cutting out. And you're going to say that I, I hung up on you when the conversation was getting good. <laughs> oh, boy. 1-800-5800-TOM. I didn't do that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Lauren on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, That's my first time calling in, and I was just going to say, if they're the 50 most powerful people, how come they can't just go to the makeup stand and get a makeover and make themselves look a little bit more presentable? Well, some of these women look like they've been Photoshopped a little bit. I'll say that. Oh, my phone cut out. I'm sorry. What did you say? Some of these women look like they've been Photoshopped. Like they've been Photoshopped? Well, they probably have. Yeah, the turkey necks have been smoothed out and... Yeah, you know, when, I mean, it's, it's going to happen. When we get older, we all start to sag and get a little bit loose around the edges. But Yeah, but your picture in, your picture won't be in a national magazine. Yeah, and all the girls that call in and get upset about, I'm like, I, I just started listening to your show, so I might be a little bit off, but like, they're always like, well, the prettier girls and the, the ugly girls and this and that. Well, I mean, if you're not comfortable with yourself, you can definitely like do things to make yourself feel better. Like, you can go and buy makeup and learn how to put it on. You can buy a nice Yeah, outfit. please do. For God's sake. The Tom Likas Show.